take it easy, honey. It's not as bad as all that. This is just great. I was sleeping okay through that sniveling. Now you really have to set her off. Hey, look, kid. We all went through the same thing at first, but you get over it. One of these days you'll be bumming cigarettes for me and, and trying to sneak an extra dish of raisin pudding. Sure, kid. You just listen to Tracy. We're all just in here for a big party. Will you shut up, you big slob? Me a slob? Do you know what she's in here for? <laughs> Yeah. And I don't care who knows it. One will get you ten. That big ape Eric is wandering around. And that there'll be somebody dead in the morning. Hey, hey, don't scream. Now don't you dare. They'll fix you up in a hurry. They got wonderful aspirin in here. It fixes up anything. Come on. It's all right. Just sit down over there. There they are. What's wrong with this one? Oh, she just has an upset stomach. Uh, she misses those cheeseburgers at the corner drugstore. Speak for yourself. Well, I tried to eat my breakfast, but I couldn't keep it down. You're new here, Anna. Sherman. Your record shows a heart murmur. Oh, no. Sit I'm down. Sure. How's the knee feeling? Yeah. One more treatment from you, they'll have to amputate. Dr. Freneau, you shouldn't let them speak to you like that. It's bad for discipline. So I think up funnies. Got plenty of time. Another funny from you, and you'll be thinking them up in isolation. Send in two matrons. We're sending you to the infirmary. Um, no, uh, she just needs something to settle her stomach. And uh, anyway, you don't want to miss the movie tonight, do you, Anna? No. You'll both miss the movie tonight. Matron, take that one to uh, the infirmary. Tell Dr. Murdoch she needs a complete checkup. And take this one to the isolation cottage. I better put another bandage on this. Let her bandage it herself. She seems to be quite a medical expert. It'll keep her mind off of jokes. Matron. Morning, Miss Adams. Hi, Tracy. You know, wake up this morning. Did you hear those screams last night? I was sleeping off a pill Murdoch gave me for my nerves. I didn't hear a thing. What screams? Oh, just screams. We've heard them before. Every time we do, we find out the next day that somebody died. Oh, look, Tracy, you're now you're not going soft and spooky on me, are you? I like you much better when you're your hard-bitten old self. Well, just the same. I'll bet you a box of Girl Scout cookies that somebody died last night. Mrs. Ford? Yes? Did anything happen last night? Happen? Like what? 
Well, did anyone die? Why, yes, Angie Collins. In the infirmary, she had another heart attack. But I didn't think anybody knew about it yet. Just the grapevine, Mrs. Ford. Well, I guess I owe you a box of Girl Scout cookies. Oh, save your money. Send me flowers after I have a heart attack. Oh, you're being ridiculous. Now, a girl had a heart attack. She probably screamed in pain. Oh, no. No, it happens much too often. Healthy young girls. I'd sure like to take a look at the death records around here for the past few years. All right, just to prove a point, I'll look at the death records. Well, now, you be careful. Just because you went to school with the governor's daughter, somebody around here is playing for keeps. Oh, Dr. Meyer, can you tell me if these death certificates are only filed alphabetically or do you have a chronological file? What are you doing, Miss Adams? Just getting together some statistics. Did you get permission from Dr. Murdoch or Mrs. Ford? Do I need that? Miss Adams has decided to get some figures on her death records. I thought you might help her. Do you mind explaining yourself? Of course. The girls are a little upset about the death last night. That's natural, I suppose, but... Well, they say there's something strange, something unnatural about the number of young girls who suddenly die. They whisper about screams... Who are they? Which girls? Well, I merely wanted to get together some figures to prove that their fears were groundless, that the death rate is normal. Which girls? You know I won't carry tales, Mrs. Ford. My job here depends on getting and keeping the girl's confidence. Miss Adams, you're supposed to be part of the administration here. You're not one of the inmates. You're not bound by the stool pigeon code of the convicts. Well, I'm afraid, Mrs. Ford, that you and I wouldn't agree about code. Then we'll have to agree about certain other things. You're to keep strictly to your own department and interfere nowhere else. You're to stop encouraging discontent and animosity among the inmates by listening to every whisper and rumor. You're to remember that this is a prison and not a select school for privileged young ladies like yourself. And you're to stop the fancy fripperies like motion pictures. But Mrs. Ford, you're just punishing the girls. You agreed to the film showings. Dr. Murdoch and I talked it over. You may continue with the showing tonight, but that will be the last. Well, I hope we can talk this over again. Really, if there's any way I can persuade... I don't think there is. We realize that you have political connections, but we feel that your immature notions on rehabilitation are disrupting the discipline here. If it comes to a showdown with the state board, I don't think the governor's daughter will be able to save your job. All right. They are ready in the mess hall, Miss Adams. They're waiting for you. Kid Anna. Talk in the powder room is that Marge is in solitary and the kids in the infirmary. Oh, 
Oh, sit down, Come on, Tracy. Sit down. I want to see the picture. Yeah, go on, sit down. Hey, can't you do something about Marge and that poor kid, Anna? Well, I'll certainly try. But you don't think she suspects anything? Not yet. I think I know how we can send her packing in a few days. We'll discuss that later. Let's get started. Eric? Is. What if someone sees him like Come that? Over. Eric. Now, Anna, listen to me. Listen. Anna, there's nothing to be afraid of. We're not going to hurt you. And you won't feel a thing. We're just going to put you into that tub of warm water. We're going to give you a kind of a, of a test like an electrocardiogram for your heart. You hear me, Anna? No, and no. Will you cooperate, Anna? No. My friend. No. Please begin. Look here, Murdoch. I've had about enough of this. I please, please, Cooper. My. How many more young lives are you going to drain to keep this senseless brute alive? We're all a part of this project, including Eric. But the transfusion no longer works on him. Last time was only for a few weeks. Now it may be only a few days. Perhaps it was a faulty circuit. You know better than that. There's been a pattern. Between each renewal, a shorter span. We'll all end up like that. To my mind, this is a very unhealthy conversation. Well, then stop it, all of you. How are they doing? Much better. Though I'd hardly call it normal. She's dead. You feel well now, Eric? The usual heart attack? No. One of them jailbreak pictures, huh? <laughs> well, it was all right, but I'm going to go to the music hall next time. They got softer seats and a classier clientele. <laughs> Cut her down! No, don't do anything. Call the matron. Matron! Better get Mrs. Ford and Dr. Murdoch. Well, aren't you gonna take her down? You shut up.
could no more have committed suicide than she could have flown over the fence. Oh, you just can't tell about people who are depressed. Look, I got to know this kid. Sure, she was depressed, but she had a baby on the outside. She was going to get out of here in less than a year. She was making big plans. Whenever she could stop crying. All I right. know all that. I interviewed her several times. All right. Do you think she was the type to hang herself? You just can't tell. No, I don't think she was the type. Of course not. It just doesn't add up. Oh, look, Tracy, will you stop plaguing me with your insane suspicions? If a girl has a heart attack, it's a plot. If a girl hangs herself, it's a plot. But who, where, when, why? You have no answers. You don't even have guesses that make sense. I'm sorry, Miss Adams. I won't mention it anymore. Oh, cut it out, Tracy. Well, you know I couldn't get along without you. But it's just possible that you are wrong. Well, maybe I am wrong. But if I am, there's an awful lot of questions that need good answers. Well, the coroner's inquest this afternoon may give us some of those answers. The autopsy report shows that the deceased met her death at approximately 8.45 p.m. on the night of June 17th. Death was apparently due to a severed spinal cord. If there's no further testimony, I believe we can conclude these proceedings and report that death was self-inflicted by hanging. Yes, Miss Adams? Well, it's just that I don't feel Anna Sherman was in a frame of mind to take her own life. She was distressed, of course, but she was reacting normally. I just can't believe that she could have done such a thing unless... unless something happened. Are you suggesting she may have been mistreated? I don't know. Or that she met death at other hands than her own? No, I suppose not. Anyone else? If you please, Mr. Griffin. Yes, yes Dr. Murdoch. Miss Adams has opened the question of conditions at the home which might have led up to this unfortunate suicide. And since we have with us today Mr. Knox of the State Department of Correction, as well as representatives of the press, I should like to put some questions to Miss Adams. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Miss Adams, you've been at La Salle about three months. Yes. And during that time, you've had complete freedom to interview the inmates. You have, in fact, interviewed most of the inmates. Yes. Have you found any instances of brutality or unsavory treatment? No. None. Miss Adams, it is your job, is it not, to be aware of the state of mind of the inmates. You are in charge of their mental health and progress, so to speak. Yes. And on the 17th of June, the last day you saw Anna Sherman, isn't it true that you were busy arranging a film showing for the inmates and gave less time than usual to your interviews? No, that's not exactly true. I'm sorry, Miss Adams. Believe me, I mean to be exact. Thank you. And now, with your permission, Mr. Griffin, I should like to ask a couple of questions of Dr. Rogers. Granted. Thank you. Dr. Rogers, you are a psychiatrist with the State Department of Mental Health. And uh, at my request, you studied Miss Adams' notes on Anna Sherman. Yes, I did. Did you find any indication in those notes that Miss Sherman was likely to take her own life within a matter of hours? According to Miss Adams' observation, Anna Sherman was unhappy, but not in a self-destructive depression. I see. Would you say, Dr. Rogers, that a properly trained psychologist can frequently detect signs of this self-destructive depression? Frequently. And would you say, and would you say that a psychologist with a substantial clinical background is better able to detect such signs? I don't like the way that question is phrased. Please, Dr. Rogers, try not to be argumentative. Just respond to the question. Well, in that case, the answer, of course, would have to be yes. Oh, thank you, Dr. Rogers, and thank you. That's all. 
These proceedings are concluded. Get this. Murdoch reveals that prison psychologist was running movies while Sherman girl hanged self. Psychiatrist testifies that better trained person could have detected Sherman girl's condition. Is that what he said? Well, not quite. Yes, I suppose he did. Oh, he bled a little, but he finally fell in with Murdoch's game. That must be the big man now. He's about due. Will you let him in? Yes. Hello. I'm just getting my things together, Dr. Rogers. I'll be gone in a minute. Oh, I was hoping you'd stay. I need your help. Weren't you sent here to whitewash the prison administration? I'm not interested in that kind of job. Miss Adams, I was sent here to get the truth. Well, then maybe you better find out why there's been such an epidemic of heart attacks among healthy young women. And why a normal girl like Anna Sherman is alleged to have hanged herself. And why Dr. Murdoch arranged to dump me so neatly as soon as I began to dig into a few facts. All right. That's just what I'll do. And you will help me, won't you? Yes. Dr. Murdoch said he'd be right down. You know something about art? Well, I know enough to say that looks like an original Rembrandt. Then it is genuine? We picked it up for less than $100 in Amsterdam in 1850. 1850? <laughs> I mean, of course, 1950. A Rembrandt in Amsterdam for $100 in 1950. Uh, well, it... Uh... It was in a small shop. Excuse me, Dr. Rogers. Cooper should have told you that, that canvas was painted over by a later artist. However, I was fortunate enough to have a hunch as to what lay underneath. I suppose it was a bit unfair to the old dealer, but he'd gotten it for nothing, too. Then you two knew each other before you came to LaSalle? Slightly. Who would ever dream of looking inside a prison for all this? I trust you'll keep my secret. Hmm. Dr. Rogers, I had no idea as to how deeply I was involving you when I asked those few innocent questions at the inquest. Innocent? I think they were loaded. Well, Miss Adams had made certain accusations. I couldn't let them go unchallenged. Miss Adams remains unconvinced. So I persuaded her to remain and work with me. Oh. Well, that's between you and the commissioner. Then we'll have your cooperation? Of course. Good. I'll start by questioning as many inmates as necessary. Sure, I can tell you. Plenty. If I wanted to stick my neck out. Hey, look, you better stick your neck out if you don't want to wake up with a rope around it, like that Anna Sherman. Well, I've been here since 47. And what do you know about Murdoch, Cooper, and the others? Well, they all came here about two years ago. Mm -hmm. That's when all the funny business started. Well, do you remember any of the names of the girls who died unexpectedly? Yeah, the first one was Lucy. I don't remember her last name. That was right after Murdoch got here. The second one was... They've interviewed 17 inmates. And they've obtained the names of 11 girls who died under mysterious circumstances. I admire your information service. There's more. Dr. Rogers wanted to inspect our death certificates. I told him that there'd been a small fire in the file room that, unfortunately, our death certificates had been destroyed. And he believed you? He also wanted to interview one of the girls, Marge, who's in the isolation cottage. Now, what are we going to do about it? What do you propose? 
Psychiatrists and psychologists can also die of heart failure. Heart trouble is not a contagious disease. Let him see that girl. Visitors, make yourself decent. Marge. Marge, you remember me. I brought Dr. Rogers with me. Hello. I don't need a doctor. We want to talk to you about Anna Sherman. You say she hanged herself. Look, Tracy said you'd level with us. She said to tell you to level with us. You know, Tracy thinks you're great. Do you think Anna hanged herself? No. Did you ever hear anyone scream while they hang themselves? Scream? No one else reported hearing screams that night. Of course not. Everyone but Marge was at the movie. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. I remember thinking when I heard her, the poor kids had it. I hammered on the door for the matron. I guess she was at the movie, too. Thanks, Marge. Goodbye. Come again, Doc. Anytime. Breaks the monotony. Hey there. Who is he? He seems to be Dr. Murdoch's personal servant. I don't think he's on the prison payroll. Anyway, the girls are scared to death of him. Well, does he ever speak? No. Those coarse and features. He might be mongoloid. I listened to everyone who had anything to say. Now, much of it sounds preposterous. But some of it doesn't. I still haven't heard a single fact. In order to get some facts, I need your cooperation. Now, the death records for the past two years... I know. An unfortunate accident, Dr. Rogers. We're reconstructing our files. Those records will be available in a week or two. All right. Now, next, I want a complete history of all the employees here. Birth, background, education, employment. And I mean to include people like Mrs. Ford and Cooper, Frenou, Meyer, Eric. And... And myself? That would help. Anything else? Yes. The remains of Anna Sherman are still here at the morgue. We've been yes, through... I know. There was an inquest and an autopsy report. But there was never any examination of tissues to determine whether Anna Sherman was dead at the time she was hanged. I want a complete autopsy. That's out of the question. The tissues are in a state of decomposition. The body must be shipped out in the morning. Do you mind? going ahead with it? Well, Carol, if I wait much longer, the tissues will be too far gone. Well, how will you get into the place? Don't worry. I'll get in. Jess, please be careful. I will. in the morgue. Come along, all of you.
Dr. Rogers. Have you finished? Just about. Won't you please tell us what you found? I've invited the staff over because we're all very interested in your findings. Well, I found, in fact, that there was some hemorrhaging around the ruptured tissue. Now, this would indicate that the girl was probably alive at the time of the hanging. I'm afraid I've proved nothing. Thank you for being so candid. I'm sorry to have placed you in this position, but I just don't like my authority challenged. I think I'm the one who should apologize. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll clean up. There wasn't enough blood in those tissues to indicate the girl was alive when she was hanged. I'm convinced she was already dead, but I could never prove it. Now, they were all there at the morgue but Cooper. You know, there are other things about Cooper. That strange business about the Rembrandt. I've noticed an air of animosity between him and the others. Jess. I'm afraid. I'll keep my eyes open, Carol. I promise. Is it? Rogers, open up quick. What do you want? I just came from a meeting of the staff. They were all there but you. Wondered why you weren't included. Meeting? What about? I performed an autopsy on Anna Sherman. They wanted to hear the results. You couldn't prove anything that way. You know, I could swear I hear the sound of a heartbeat. Stay away. But that isn't possible. It's true. It's your heartbeat. What is it? I've never heard anything like that. Get out of here, Rogers. Get away as far as you can and take that Adams girl with you. Tell me about it. I'm a doctor. Maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me. All right. Then let's talk about art. But Rembrandt. I, I, I told you. You weren't in Amsterdam in 1950. You were here, and so was Murdoch. Who are you, Cooper? Who's Murdoch? Where do you come from? You're not the type to be jailers. What are you doing here? You know, Cooper, I had the feeling tonight that Murdoch's through with you. Whatever the game is, I think it's over for you. You're bluffing, Rogers. I know it. Because it's not Murdoch who's through with me. It's I who am through with him. Then tell me about it. No. There are lives at stake. I won't tell you about it. I'll do better. It's all written out. A story you won't be able to understand or believe. I expect to die suddenly. Or disappear. If I do... You'll find all the necessary instructions in your mail. Well, then tell me now. I may be able to help. You'd do better to worry about your own skin. Look at those. Tell me if they're strong and sharp. Try them. Cut this. Go ahead. You won't be able to believe my story. Maybe you'll remember this. Maybe this will help you to believe. Cooper! Look at it. Not even a mark. Now go. You see, Cooper, we've noted your increasing disaffection over a period of years now. We all talked it over last night. We realized your time was running out. We decided against a renewal because we felt that your continued existence was a menace to the project. So, you've decided to let me die? Yes. 
It was unanimous. And each one should tell you so. How about Eric? Didn't he get to vote? Cooper, my friend, you know this is the right decision. It is right even for you because you don't really want to go on anymore. That's why I voted as I did. Yes. I knew this was coming. And I'm prepared for it. 220 years is too long for any man to live. After a time, you, you think you're more than a man. I think you can make life <laughs> and take life. You must understand, Cooper. You have a very few moments left. Very few, Cooper. Listen, maybe this is a mistake for me to go now, like this. All my work mustn't be lost. I feel I'm close to an answer. I know it. I've analyzed the current, broken it down into a hundred frequencies. I just need a few more years. Please, please. Cooper, we have all your notes. We'll continue with the work. I promised. Yourselves. If I die, you'll all die sooner than you think. I, I sent the whole story. Everything. Names, dates, places, proof. Cooper, the truth. Did you do that? Yes. Where is it? Cooper, try to understand. It's too late to save you. Who did you send it to? Tell us the truth. suppose he sent it to? If he sent anything. Rogers, or that girl. Let's... Let's get rid of him quietly. But you don't know Cooper's dead. No, I don't. But there hasn't been a sign of him for days. And I found the instructions in my mailbox as he promised. Take a look at that. He says I'll find his diary under a large rock near the cliffs. Well, even if there is a diary, what do you expect it to tell you? I don't know. But it may be something I want to take to the police. Now, if I'm not back in exactly one hour, I want you to take my car and pick me up down the road. Now, there's a big signboard on your right as you drive toward town. I'll be waiting there. I have uh, 920. Right. Bye, Carol. Bye. Dr. Murdoch, please. Thanks. Rogers has gone for a walk outside the grounds. A walk? Get Eric. I'll go for the others.
I was born in Hampshire County, England in 1733 and apprenticed at an early age to a physician. Murdoch, Meyer, Freno, Eric and Mrs. Ford were all born in the same period. We came together in Paris in the 1780s to work with the great scientist, Dr. Comte de Saint-Germain. Saint-Germain, who was experimenting with animal magnetism, was on the verge of a momentous discovery. How to prolong life indefinitely. It is well known to medicine that the cells of the body continually reproduce and replace themselves. What is not known is why this process does not go on forever. It is the answer to this question that we learned from Saint-Germain. We discovered that it is possible to transfer bioelectric energy from one individual to another. Naturally, the person who is the donor dies, but the person who is the receiver of the energy gets a new lease of life. In the course of time, we learned that the best source of energy is in mature young women of childbearing age. The donor is placed in an electric conducting bath of copper sulfate solution. We've tried to analyze this current so that it could be synthesized. Then it would not be necessary to take one human life to prolong another. Where is Rogers? Is this where the papers were? Eric, you are sick again. Come on to the house. You need help. I'll take you to Murdoch. Come. What happened? Stay with Eric while I get Murdoch. Eric, 
Come with me. Get some flashlights. Call the gate. Nobody gets out. Nobody gets out without written permission from me. And get some matrons to round up these girls. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go back. Stay here together. What happened? Harry broke into the dorm. He tried to grab one of the girls. Was anyone hurt? I don't think so. Oh, my gosh. I've got to get out of here. You stay in my place and lock yourself in. Okay, thank you. I'll be back soon. Okay. Hi, Miss Adams. I'm sorry I can't open up orders. Look, please, it's urgent. I'm sure it will be all right. I'll try to reach Dr. Murdoch. If he says okay... Eric, originally a scientist like ourselves, was a casualty of our first experiment. A peculiar side effect of the process is that as we use up our borrowed life energy, there are dramatic changes in our bodies. Externally, we develop a petrified sheath, harder than stone. But except for those last few hours before we require a transfer, we are the same as other people. Quickly. No, not again. Let her go, Eric. Let her... No, Eric. No, Eric. Eric. All right. All right, Eric. Get her ready. Marge from isolation. The matron's dead. Help them get this over. She's gone. It was a waste. It hardly helped at all. I don't think he's good for more than a few hours. I tell you, it doesn't work in him anymore. Well, this will... Keep him quiet for a while. And then? Oh, well, never mind about him. What about Rogers and that diary of Cooper's? He's probably reached the police with it by now. I don't think so. He has the diary, but we have Miss Adams. Get rid of her. 
Let's try to restore some order. Half the women are running around here loose. And all this goes on behind the locked door of the attic. Do you mean they've kept themselves alive for over 200 years? You believe Cooper's story? Well, he offers all kinds of proof. It explains everything. The heart attacks, Anna Sherman, Eric, and that art collection of Murdoch's. But how can we cope with them if they can't even be hurt? They can be hurt. You see, it's only in the last hours when their vital energy is running out. When you hear the heartbeat that they're dangerous. After an energy transfer, where well, they go along for months or years like anyone else. If I could find a gun. I've never seen one around, not even on the guards. It's not that kind of a prison. If they find out you're back. I'll be safe enough until they can put their hands on that diary. Here, you do it. See if you can put in a call to the state police. Outside operator, please. Sorry, Miss Adams. No outside calls. But this is very important. I want the state police. You check with Dr. Murdoch. Just a minute. I've got to check with Dr. Murdoch. Find out where Murdoch is and the others. Where can I reach Dr. Murdoch? Sorry, he's somewhere around the ground. Or Mrs. Ford or... Sorry, Miss Adams. I told you. They're all out. Thanks. Would anyone be at the house? Well, Minnie, she's one of the inmates. She keeps house for them. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to find their little attic and put them out of business. Now, lock up behind me. Don't let anyone in. here, Dr. Rogers. I know. I'm supposed to wait for Dr. Murdoch. Oh, and Minnie, uh, Dr. Murdoch wants you to stay in the dormitory tonight. He wants all the inmates checked in there. Now? Yes, now. Well, if you say so. the switchboard well I've worked it good now if anyone tries to get in here pick up that phone and start screaming loud come on bring back Rogers Carol Adams and that Tracy girl right away I'll take the responsibility. Get the state police. Please. I think that's Carol calling. Please. Stay here and get the state police. Tell them there's a riot. Tell them anything. Move back. Get away from there. Come on. Get on that phone again. Get up. It's dead. Tell them to get back to their posts. It was nothing. The switch ward. Get back to your posts. Do as I say. Get some of that wire and tie him up tight. I'm going to leave you this gun. Now listen carefully. 
Where's Meyer? He went to get Rogers. <laughs> get undressed completely and put... No! Grab her. No! the lights. Must be a fuse. Get some candles. I'll switch the equipment over to emergency power. Where are Rogers and Meyer? I don't know. Rogers will be back. How do you propose to get that diary? You know Rogers won't be fool enough to bring it with him. Perhaps he'll tell us where it is now that we have Miss Adams. All right, Eric. Go ahead. Get the girl. We're ready. Not again. It's only been a few hours. He's a menace to us. We can't give him another transfer. We can keep him quiet for a while by pretending to. I won't complete the connections. If we can delay him long enough, he'll die a natural death. or I'll burn them up.
be all right. All right, Eric. All right, we'll begin. Miss Adams, maximum. Eric, minimum. How long do you think he has? Only a few minutes, I hope. Eric. Eric, try to understand. We're having some difficulty. Now, you've built up a lot of resistance to transference. But we'll make it work. Just be patient. Dim. Respiration heavy. He's reaching his terminal phase. His heart won't take it any longer. All slower. Eric. Eric, don't. Don't be a fool. That won't help. Get him into the transference chair. Bring him two. Get him something to drink. We haven't attached the electrodes yet. But I'm glad to see you understand. You don't think I'd join you? If you read Cooper's diary, you'd realize this gun is useless against Eric. It'll do very nicely for you. And with Carol. Where's Cooper's diary? It won't work. I neutralized the solution. Look on the floor near the tub. Mr. Ford. Sodium salts. What did you hope to gain by this? And there's no more water. Mr. Rogers, you made the choice. No, wait. The light fuses in my pocket. Take a look. Water valves next to the fuse boxes in the cellar. All right, for now. Get downstairs, turn on the water and the lights. Roger said he'd pull all the lights in the house. If they went on again, it'd mean he was in trouble. That's why he gave me this gun. Now, I'm going to go over there and see if I can help. Is anybody with me? You could get a hundred years for that. Okay, I'll go alone. It'll be worth a hundred years to get my hands on Mrs. Ford. I'm with you. Me too. Matron! Hey, Matron! We'd like permission to visit Murdoch. Yes, that's Yeah.
Give me the gun. No. Kill him first. Kill him! Now get her out of there. Quick! She's filling with smoke. Get downstairs. I'm not going, Dr. Rogers. I have some work to finish. Can you make it? Yes. The place is in flames. I told you I'm staying. I must complete my records. Will you help me, Mrs. Ford? Of course I will, Dr. Murdoch. The project of the Germain Cellular Theory has reached completion. Tracy, take care of her. I'm going back upstairs. Nobody's going up those stairs or down them. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on, girls, back to the dormitory. 